Hello, and welcome to this brand new Blender Smoothie tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, the final part of the tree tutorial series, we're going to be looking at how to simulate the effects of gravity on the leaves so that they don't stick out weirdly. Um, this is a common thing that I see in a lot of trees because it's actually a pretty complex method to take care of this. Um, but if I could just show you a picture of one of the earlier trees I created. Uh, now this is where it was supposed to be an ash. Um, and you can see the compound leaves that don't really work very well simply because they're all sticking out at weird angles. Um, I don't know, maybe I could zoom in a little bit more. I'm not sure how well this is, showing, this is showing up on the screen. But you can see that they're not really, they're not really um, arranged the way that you would expect them to be on a real tree. Uh, on a real tree you wouldn't see leaves like the ones over here sticking straight up and not bending and drooping in accordance to gravity. Um, and this really takes away a lot of realism from the trees, believe it or not. Um, it's a more subtle effect on other trees that don't have such noticeable leaf textures as this one. But it's still visible, and it adds a lot of realism to go ahead and add the effect. So, I can just close this. Um, basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be splitting our leaf object here, because all of these leaves are one object in Blender right now. And we're going to be breaking it up so that each leaf is its own object. Uh, then we're going to set up a vertex group on one of the leaves um, so that we can use that for pinning data in a cloth simulation, copy that to all the other leaves, merge all the leaves back into the same object, and then apply the simulation. So the first thing we need to do is split this up into several components. And you might be tempted to just press tab to go into edit mode, uh, control tab 3 to select faces instead of vertices and you might try just hitting P and separate the material or the object by loose parts and basically what this would do is it would split up all of the loose parts, the parts that weren't connected into their own object. Now this would work um, but we have a lot of leaves in here right now. If you take a look we have um, up here at the top you can see we have about 41,000 faces and that's a lot of faces, and you're looking at Blender potentially crashing if you try to separate all of those at once. So I found that the best way to do is to first split the leaves into smaller components, and then separate those smaller components into their own individual leaves. So what I do first is I deselect everything by pressing A, go down to Select, and I select Random. And basically what I do from here is I hide that selection. Um, I guess, you know, we can go ahead and separate this. I'll just hit P and separate by selection. So now we have, if I press tab to go into object mode again, we have two different leaf components. I'm just going to hide the branches there by pressing H and hide the tree trunk also by pressing H, just so we can see these a little more clearly. So we have two leaf objects now um, that we just separated. And, you know, before I go any farther, let's remember to do this. I'm going to go down to object with the leaf object selected, one of them, parent, clear parent. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other leaf object. Object, parent, clear parent. Um, and actually I should have done that probably earlier before we did anything else. The reason you want to do that is um, you can run into some problems with the simulation if the leaves are still parented to the tree branches. And if you move the tree at all before clearing the parent, then when you clear the parent on the leaves, the leaves will return to their original position, and then they won't be lined up with the tree branches. So you actually want to do that as soon as possible after creating the tree geometry. Um, but with that out of the way, basically we're just going to keep doing what I just did there, separating the objects. So we're going to split these objects into smaller objects, and maybe even those objects into smaller objects as well. So I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode, select random, P, separate by selection. Press tab to go back into object mode, and I'm going to press H to hide those, so we can just work with these. And I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode, select random, P to separate by selection, tab, H to hide those, and then alt H to bring all those back. Um, but I do still want to keep, I'm just going to move these branches to another layer, right click that, shift right click that, M to move to another layer, and I'll just move them to that one underneath it, right there. Okay. So now if I select one of these leaf objects and go into edit mode, press A to select everything, we still have about 10,000 faces per object. And um, first of all, 
we can actually just delete some of these right off the bat. Um, let's see here. If I wanted to, I could probably just go ahead. Nah, we'll leave that there for now. It's probably best to see how the whole thing looks rendered and then see if we can delete any leaves. But typically, there is a bit of cleanup work required. Um, so I'm trying to get the face count down to about 2,000, maybe 2,500. Um, so basically, what I'm going to be doing for the rest of these is I'm going to be moving this to another layer by pressing M. Then we'll come into this layer, press Tab to go into edit mode, select, random, P, separate by selection. And then I'm going to do that with each of those individual components. So select, random, P, separate by selection, hide those, same with this. Press tab to go into edit mode, select random, P, separate by selection, tab, H, alt H to bring them all back. And now if I just select one by right clicking it, press tab to go into edit mode, A to select everything, we have about 2,600 faces per object. Um, and I'm basically just going to have to do that with all of the other leaf objects. So if I go ahead and save this, and I'm going to move these to a different layer just to get those out of the way. Press A to deselect those. And then I'm going to go back to the first layer, right click another, another leaf object, M to move it to that same layer, and then repeat the same process, tab to go into edit mode, select random, P, separate by selection, tab, select random, P, separate by selection, hide those, tab, select random, P, separate by selection, alt H to bring those back, and then move those to that same layer with the other one. And again, the reason I'm doing this is if we try to do this all at once, Blender will crash. Um, even on a computer with a pretty, a pretty high-end PC, um, it will still crash on something like that. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, um, which I believe is the maximum my operating system can support, and it still can't really handle um, anything above about six or seven thousand I think was the limit so I'm gonna go ahead and move those and I think we just have this last one here move that over here tab select random separate that by the selection tab select random and alright so now I should be able to move all of those back to the first layer all of these back to the first layer so now, oops, all right, there they are. Um, we should have, each of these objects should have only about 2,600 faces in them, approximately. Um, so now the next step is going in, right-clicking each object, pressing tab to go into edit mode, A to select them all, and P, and separate by loose parts. And I'm gonna pause the recording here because this takes quite a while to get all of these done, so. Okay. Um, so I'm only going to take care of a couple of these leaves for now, um, just for demonstrative purposes. Um, mostly because I think I added probably too many leaves towards the beginning. Um, these are typically a little smaller than I think I would make them on a typical tree. Um, so generally, to get the right leaf count, I typically have, I think probably after I split each part two times, so if I split if I split the main part into four sections, I typically have about half as many leaves as I had in this case. So maybe I added too many branches to the higher levels, I'm not sure. But in this case, I'm just going to be working with these leaves over here. Um, and you can apply this to the tree um, on a more grand scale. So I'm going to take care of those. and. Basically, all I want to do is get the technique across for this. Um, so we have the leaves separated into their individual parts. And the next thing we want to do is set up the vertex group. So uh, before you set up a vertex group, you have to pick a single leaf that you're going to apply this to. And we're going to be copying the vertex group to all of the tree. But you need to find a leaf um, that you are going to apply the group to and just keep track of that leaf so you don't lose it. In this case, I'm going to do this one right here. Um, oh, the other thing is, once you have all the leaves separated, you want to select all of them 
and press shift Control alt c and origin to geometry and this way the object origins are actually in the center of the leaves and not at the base of where the tree trunk would be and this will help immensely with the simulation as well so I'm still going to use this leaf and first we want to determine where we want the vertex group to be applied so to do that I typically just go into texture view and then we can sort of see how the texture is arranged along that leaf um, it's a little hard to see probably on the screen but in this case I can tell that the left edge here is where we want the pinning to be applied so I'm going to go over here to the vertex uh, the vertex data or object data panel over here and I'm going to add a vertex group just by clicking that plus button there and I'm going to control click the name and we'll just call this weight and it's already at one there so hundred percent I'm going to assign it to that side and just to make sure it didn't apply to this side I'm going to right click this edge to select it as well and assign zero weight so now if we go from object mode to weight paint mode we should see something like that um, so of course the red indicates the maximum value and the blue indicates the minimum value so I'm going to go back into object mode and the next thing we want to do is leave textured view just to speed up the viewport a little bit press B box select all of these and the leaf that we set up the vertex group on is still active so all we have to do is come over here to this little arrow on the vertex groups panel and choose copy vertex group to selected if we do that and then press control J to join all of the leaves back into one object and this may take a while depending on how many leaves you have and I'm gonna uh, press shift control alt C origin to geometry again just to make sure that's centered if we go back into weight paint mode we should see that it applied the texture or the uh, weight paint gradient to all of the leaves and there are only a couple more things to do from here the first thing we want to do is go back into object mode press tab to go into edit mode select everything and hit W subdivide and what this does if we go back into weight paint mode is we can see it added a third uh, color in the middle of the gradient that has sort of a medium amount of weight and this way the leaves aren't just angled straight down they actually have some curvature to them uh, so it'll look a lot more natural that way and something else at this point that you can do if your computer can handle it uh, that I typically do is I add a subsurf modifier just one level turn on optimal display and then I add a displace modifier and I add a new texture go over to the texture panel uh, we'll load the displace texture.001 change that from image or movie to clouds and then I come back over here to the displacement settings and maybe make that about 0.2 and come over here to the left and set the shading to smooth and that just gives them a little bit more of a distinct shape as you can see there so I'm actually going to go into edit mode really quickly and change the pivot point down here to individual origins and press S to scale these up a little bit because I think the leaves are kind of small for this to really be demonstrated clearly okay so the only thing left to do is actually add the simulation and all you have to do for this is select the object go to the physics panel enable a cloth simulation uh, turn on pinning click the little box there and under the field beneath it click that and load the weight vertex group and then we'll go down to cloth cache I'm gonna set the end frame to 20 because you really don't have to let the simulation run for very long and then I'm going to bake the simulation alright so it should be baked and it should be ready to go so I'm just gonna play through it I'm gonna find an area to zoom in on and I'm just going to use the arrow keys to kind of move my way through it alright so there's frame one two three four and you can see especially in some of these leaves in the side here as I'm moving forward the ends are actually hanging out um, while the middle parts and the parts that are connected to the branches are staying in place pretty nicely now 
some of these you'll just sort of have to find a happy medium on because some of them will still be kind of curving down while others are bouncing back up. So I typically go to somewhere around frame 16 or 17, something like that. Um, it's typically good enough because a lot of the leaves are generally curved down at that point. And that's really it as far as establishing gravity so that the leaves are affected by it. Um, depending on the type of tree you're making, you might also want to try to simulate this in parts of the branches when you're actually using the sapling add-on to set it up. Uh, maybe give some of the branches on higher levels some negative curvature, or positive curvature, I can't remember what direction it angles them at, um, to make it look like they're being weighed down by the leaves. And that's something else to consider when you're working with seasons in trees is that um, a tree with no leaves, a tree in winter, or a deciduous tree in winter, uh, the branches might be slightly curved up more than it would be in summer because they're being pulled down by the weight of the leaves. So those are all things to consider. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. So we covered the creation of the tree using segment splitting, uh, the leaf shaders, the bark shaders, and finally the simulation of gravity on the leaves. And at this point, all you have to do is make sure everything's set up for the render and render it. And it may take a while to render, mostly because of the leaf shader, uh, but I think it looks pretty realistic. Um, and this is the method that I would highly recommend using when creating trees, using Blender anyway, for nature scenes. So that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot from it, and I'll see you in the next one.